Well, guess what time it is, folks? It's time to take the wiggle out of my RV. Uh, I've got a W24 Warcourse chassis, about 18 years old. I've always tolerated the, the tail wag, I guess, or what they call it, wagging the dog. You know how it is when a semi passes you and you you got to hang on for dear life. It's a white knuckle event. You swing to the left, you swing to the right, and after a couple of swings, you everything calms back down. And uh, I've tolerated it for years, and uh, but it's slowly getting worse, I guess. You know, leaf springs wear, shackles wear, and it just doesn't get better on its own. So we're going to do an upgrade. I uh, got here from Brazzles, the Ultra Track for the Workhorse chassis. This fits the W21, 22, 24, yeah, W20, 21, W22, and W24. So it takes care of all those. And so uh, first of all, always, always impressed. Everything I've ever got from Brazzles is always packed so well. You know, they do a really good job. So we get all these out. We get all the all the bubble wrap off and stuff. Let's spit everything out. It's, I do know it's made in the USA, and it's powder coated. Look at that beautiful paint. That is nice. Good looking job. So let me unpack the rest of this, lay it all on the table, and we'll get started. All right, we got it all unpacked here. Nice, pretty parts. Um, I've already found out I have the metric style of differential being the Dana S130. So I do not need this plate. So we'll put this one to the side. And so this is all we have to, have to deal with to, to crawl underneath the RV. Uh, they give you a nice uh, instruction manual here. Uh, one thing I like tells you the list, list of tools we need. So I don't, don't, don't get everything laid out with a torque wrench, a couple of wrenches, a couple of sockets. Just standard stuff. Nothing crazy, nothing special. So we got that done. Um, I went ahead after I read the instructions and just to make life easier for me, I went ahead and made note of the torque of each bolt while I'm under the RV getting, under, getting that done. Um, see a nice hardware pack. It even comes with Loctite. So we got all that. Um, oh, and I also wanted to mention out of all the other trap bars out there, because I know there's different manufacturers that make these, but, but it seems like Brazzles has, has the best price point with their Ultra Track. Uh, just a little, little work, five hundred dollars at the making of this video, but I'll put a uh, link to it uh, below the video so you can check it out for yourself. So this shows you an idea of what we're going to be doing. This is what, where we're going to be installing it uh, onto the differential and then onto the frame. It's going to lock that differential, keep it from wiggling back and forth. It's going to tie it into the frame. And I'm trying to wrap my head around this, I'm trying to envision what's happening. See if I can explain this, maybe help all of us. So that, okay. So I got to thinking about, you know, we're going down the road. That's our RV. There's a, a rear end. You know, something in motion wants to stay in motion, especially these big monster, these 22.5 inch wheels. Imagine the, the rotational mass that things got. And we suddenly make a turn up here, you know, like with the RV, it's 38 feet long. Um, you know, it's a lot of distance between the front wheel, wheels and the rear wheels. You know, in, in an ideal situation, the moment you turn, it would turn. But that's not what's happening evidently so when we turn we get about a second delay because of the flex in the leaf springs the shackles the wear that you know 18 years of use so instead of it turning instantly there's about a second delay and then it snaps and comes over and then you feel that over correction then you got to go back the other way and so you you come back and then about a second later the differential flexes to catch up with you and then you're you're constantly doing a oop 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 you know till you get steady again so uh I kind of that's what's happening i just want to try to explain that um so uh when i get under there i'll show you the shackles and stuff too on this w24 but in my mind i think that's what's going on i thought it would be would be cool if somebody someday would have like some cameras mounted to the frame rail as this was going on have a before and after so you can see what's really happening uh during a sudden maneuver thought that'd be pretty interesting so uh i guess i will uh gather these tools up and head under the RV. So before I crawl under there, I wanted to point out something. Of course, luckily the, with the W24, we got quite a bit of clearance under there. Of course, I understand everybody's built differently. God's blessed me with a skinny body, so I just pop under there, do whatever I need to do. It's not, not a problem. But maybe you're a little bit healthier of a fella and you can, you, you might find it kind of tight getting under your RV. Now, keep in mind, you know, the wheels have to be weighted. You know, it's got to be on the ground or at least on blocks we cannot use the jacks to raise up the rv because that's going to change the position of the leaf springs and everything it's got to be in the position that would be just sitting on the ground 
So a way around this, if you want like an extra four inches of clearance, just get you some two by tens, two by twelve, stack them up like this. So just like a stair step, just drive up it, click, 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 and that'll get you four more inches. Remember, you need to do that on all four wheels. So all the way around, you'll be raised up uh, that, that way. So that way, you can, if you need it, that'll give you more, a little bit more clearance. But you'll find when I'm under here, I, I, I find that I have plenty of clearance. It's just, just not, not an issue for me. But uh, it may be different for you. All right, step one, follow the manual, hold up the bracket, make sure it lines up. All right, we got the bracket. There it goes. That's the one we want. That's a metric one. All right. Now I just got to break these bolts loose. Okay, I have to confess, to break those bolts loose, I use a cheater pipe on my ratchet. Because I, I got these little spaghetti arms. I don't have much strength. But the cheater pipe helps to even the score. There you go, step one. Alrighty, so got the bolts out. Next step, and you gotta watch this because it could be easily overlooked. Because when I took these out, they had flat washers on them. And it tells you in the book if you have flat washers, these flat washers have to go between the new bracket and the housing. So I got my new bolts here. So it's got to be like, like this here. Hang on, it's wrong bolt. It's got to be done like this. That's got the big long bolt in it. Then this flat has to go in after that. And then it goes just like that. So I'm just going to get it started. Then I'll pull each one out, put the the, the uh, red thread lock thread locking material on there. Where my the flat washer go? Oh, another thing I did, I took these flat washers because they're so rusty. I, I took some sandpaper to them, shined them up a little bit, got all the grit off of them, so I know I had a nice smooth surface between the plate and the housing. Just do a dry run, make sure everything's going to go together well. Looking good, looking good. Thread lock go. Yeah. All right. I'll put it on this one first. Now I gotta get my wash back in place.
Okay, now I'll just grab my torque wrench, torque wrench and I'll set it to 150 foot pounds and we'll torque it down. Alright, so it's torque time. I need to eat more Wheaties. Okay, so our next step is position the frame bracket onto the passenger side frame rail. So I've already got my, my bolt started here. These fine thread bolts. And this just sits right up here in the frame rail. Just like so. Stay put. Alright, we'll get this up here. And then get these big bolts. Slides back and forth. That way we're making our, our adjustment when we put the main arm across there. So that was pretty easy. No, no problem at all. Alright. So let's reposition the camera and get that uh, cross member piece put in. Okay, now at this point I'm going to deviate from the book a little bit. Um, it wants me to install this kind of loosely and then, uh, then tighten up the pinch plate that's over here. But what I want to do, I want to tighten this up pretty snug first so I can be for certain that this is not operating in a bind. So in, they, in the manual they point out to you to be sure, do not forget, you want to put these large washers in here to, to protect those bushings. You got one on each side. You keep in mind where our nut is up here. Got this large washer and that goes on the back side. Now this is a long bolt. It's gonna take a while for me to ratchet this up. So I'm just gonna pause the camera at this point. Alright, so I think you can see here what I've done. See it's it's good and tight, not just finger tight. Because I want to make sure this is in position because we, we want this to go straight up and down. We don't want it to be pushed too far to the back or too far to the front, putting the bushings in a bind. So now I know, because this one is really tight, I know exactly where this should be positioned. So I just slide it down, line it up. All I gotta do is allow for my washer. It goes in between it. That, like so and now I can snug these bottom bolts up and I know this will be in position now I'm, I still may have to adjust this link possibly to get to line up with this hole but that's okay at least I'll, I'll know this is in the correct position and I'm everything's running as 
true as possible and, and nothing is in a bind. Okay, so it's time to torque this up. I've got, got it in position. I can tell I'm going to have to adjust this arm because my hold doesn't line up exactly right, but that's okay. I know nothing's in a, in a bind. So, and I did find a typo uh, in the manual. It didn't mention a 15 16 socket, but you will need one. So, so snug this up. These sockets are three quarter. We'll snug them just a little bit. Don't need to go crazy. All right. All right. I got it in position. Alright, so it's not going anywhere. Alright, so now now that I know it's it's locked where I want, want it to be, I'm gonna take this bolt back out, put my lock tight on it. It's just I can take this loose and nothing else is going to move. Long boats, long boats. No, I'll take this one out and I'll cut it. Got our other bolts here. Some locked up right here for the jam nut because that's after I think it, these get torqued, I think, to 45. All right, get this back, back one done. I'm trying to hurry, notice like watching paint dry. Okay, where'd my lock tight go? more on the back side where that jam nut's going to go. All right. All 
Alright, let me get the book out, make sure we're getting the right torque. Alright, so yeah, so 45 on the short bolts here and 80 foot pounds on the bottom. Alright, so I've already got my torque wrench ready for 80 foot pounds. Change my socket. Eighty foot pounds. How would I say? Forty. Said forty-five on the other. All right, go forty-five. Alternating, take your time. Just gonna tighten up our jam nuts and we'll be done with this part. Three quarter inch, where are you? And we'll get to that one, that's a little bit tight. Get this lined up. It looks like I'm off maybe just one turn. So I'm gonna un unscrew this one full turn that should get me lined up over here. So let me get that. So to do so, I need to come over and loosen that up again. So let me get that started and then we'll return. In case the camera didn't pick it up, I wanted to point out, see how we're not quite lined up with that hole? That's why I need to lengthen the rod to get that hole to line up. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did. Because you can see here it still didn't line up. It turned out it took three turns. And here's, 
guess that worked. It worked out pretty good for me. All I had to do was loosen this bolt just in one, one turn. And so I didn't have to remove it. I just come like this, rotate, give it a good twist. One full turn. And there we go. Now we should be in alignment. Here's my bolt at. Yep, so that bolt fits. Good deal. Alright. So my washer's in place. Remember, it's important to keep those washers on both both sides of those bushings. You know that? Throw some more Loctite on it. And I got a knocking that down here somewhere. Here we go. Alright. That's a long threaded bolt. That's going to take me a while to ratchet down. So let me get that done and uh, we'll just go. I think about got this project whooped. Okay, so I got it ratcheted up. You set a big long thread. That takes a while. I'm sure you don't want to watch that. But then we just. I got my torque wrench set to 150 pounds. 150 foot pounds. Get a good bite on it. Gravy. Okay. Yep. All right. Now then, what else we got to do? We just got two more steps. Let me get the camera down here. Okay. Last thing to do. Same like I did that one over there. I gotta torque this one up to 100 foot pounds, 150 foot pounds. The last step is I gotta put me some Loctite in there and on this jam nut, jam it back. So uh, so let me get that done and then we'll do a final once over and make sure we got everything correct and nothing's rubbing anywhere. Okay, so one of the final things to do is to jam this nut. So we want some Loctite on it first. Oh, come on camera, get the camera in the spot. There we go. Put Loctite on it. Snag it up and get our wrench on there. I think that one's an inch and an eighth. Oops. Inch and an eighth, where'd you go? Let's see here, let me can reach in there. There we go. I'm trying to do this with my left hand, a little bit difficult. Alright, let me get two hands on this, get a good torque on it, then we'll do a final walkthrough, make sure we got everything done right. Okay, final thoughts. Well, I think it worked really smooth. In fact, pretty much, pretty much a lay down job because I, la I laid here on this little blue, blue foam mat the whole time. So it's pretty easy to deal with. Really no, no special tools unless you don't have a torque wrench. Just get your torque wrench. It goes up to 150 foot pounds. Uh, one thing to want to be mindful of is like your brake lines. Of course, I had plenty of clearance. Nothing's rubbing. Uh, it did come with some of this wire loom. So I slid it on there just for good measure. But nothing's touching. Oh, that looks good. You know, check your link over here. Make sure there's no brake lines or hoses or anything close or near. But with the W24, you got plenty of clearance, it seems like. But everything's Loctited and torqued. So the only thing's left now is the test drive. So we'll get, we'll get this on the road next day or two, and I will report back. Okay, here we are, testing off the new track bar. We've got a semi coming up alongside of us, just to show you. Not on one hand. No problem. And he even had the skirting along the bottom. Now sometimes that skirting makes it uh, even worse. But uh, enjoying this new track bar for sure.
Alright, testing out the track bar. Big trucks go by, I didn't even know it. Drive with one hand. Alright, two more trucks pass us right now. One after another. One big truck. Come in number two big truck. track bar. And here's some uneven pavement. It's a good example. I'm going to let this truck pass me first. And the corn truck pass, I guess. Alright, here we go. This is uneven, uneven pavement. Usually that always that, that would always get when I when I change from one pavement to another, it would always be kind of violent coming across from one to the other. It, it, it took it away. That doesn't happen no more. So that's immediate difference. Making that transition, it's nice and smooth. It's not whipping me across like it used to. Going back and forth again and again. big lip, one piece of black top to another. You know the immediate difference we noticed when we left the house, when we pull out of the driveway, we got a sharp turn to make, so the back tire always has to, has to drop off the curb. It's about a five inch curb. And I didn't notice it, but, but Sherry did. She said, wow, what, what's different? The RV didn't shake back and forth like it normally does. Because normally when you drop off a curb, the, the RV goes rocks back and forth really violently, really hard. Well, that took that out of it. The whole 90% of it is gone. Uh, that kind of surprised me. I wasn't expecting that out of a track bar. I realized the torsion, that's more of a torsion bar's job. But the track bar is also doing the same thing. It really has helped with that side-to-side -side rock. Get some more speed up here. track bar now. I shouldn't have waited so long. Should have got one years ago. But you don't know till you try it, but now I know. Alright, another example, uneven pavement. Transition is nice and smooth. Where before, I'd have to get ready for it. This came in kind of handy than putting this black top down. for a good test. Because I'm on the black top now and I'll go, go off the, on the shoulder. Nice and smooth. Where before when I went to come up on that shoulder I had to get ready with the steering wheel.
because it'd kind of jump back over and I'd have to counter, counter steer to get back straight again. But big improvement, big improvement. And here's something we noticed always coming in this, making this turn. Anytime we would kind of make a, like a U-turn or something like that, you'd always get a lot of lean. And that's taking a lot of that out. That track bar has helped with that too. Anytime you get a transition from one road to another. We don't get that rock and choop, choop, choop like that. It doesn't happen near as much. It's really helped a whole bunch. Still get just a little bit, but not, not near like it was. Okay, now we're going back into our driveway like we always do. We always jump the curb to get in there. And let's see how it does. Okay, here comes the curb. over. That's nice. Yeah, no, normally you'd hit that curve and you get that rocking, bad rocking motion back and forth, back and forth. Right. Well, as you can see, I'm in my office now editing this, editing this video. and It's been actually, um, I think it's over two months since I actually installed it, but I wanted to get some drive time on it so I could really give it a good review to tell you how much I love it. It's just amazing. Uh, we actually just got back from a, um, a trip. We's up, I've got about 20 hours drive time on this now. We've made a trip up to Illinois and back and it just, just performed great. What, what a difference it is. And of course I just want to point out to you here, uh, of course I'm here, you sum up Brazel's website and I'll put a link to this. But because uh, this is the, what we ordered here uh, for 520 bucks. Uh, this is the rear ultra track track bar. You see the it fits the W20, W21, W22, and the W24. Real easy install and made a tremendous difference. Um, of course, I know there's other upgrade options too. So now, I mean, I'm just been blown away how much difference this made. So now it's got me thinking, wow, what what would it, what would this make a difference in? Because one thing I was that caught my eye is. And I was wanting to point this out too. Brassel's really got a cool website. What I really like is when you, you go over here and just choose your chassis. So if you don't have a W24, but you got a W20, and you just click it, and it lists all the parts for it. So let's go back to just the W24, because that's what I'm interested in. So we'll do 20 W4. One thing that caught my eye, I was looking at their, the um, anti-sway bars. Because I'm just amazed how much performance difference I got just from the track bar. So now it got me thinking, well, how much improvement could I get from an anti-sway bar? So, um, but, but first caught my eye, I was wondering what the price difference was between the two. Well, I see the difference is this is just an anti-sway bar only. Where this one is actually, it's an anti-sway bar and track bar combo. Because see, it's got this big bar in here, kind of just like this bar. So that's going to tie the leaf springs to the chassis and keep that keep that wiggle out of it so uh i bet that would really be a nice improvement of course also you've got the um the rear anti-sway bars also let me scroll up a little bit here and uh, they offer two different ones uh one's a one and a half inch one is one and three quarter i bet these they probably perform like a go-kart then they ride like a rail so anyways, if you want better steering performance out of your RV, just give Brazzles a call and tell them what chassis you got and what kind of issues you're having, and uh, they'll be able to help you out. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed day. See you, bye.